Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to the Fantasy 420, where today we are going to be discussing some of the latest NFL moves and transactions that will be affecting fantasy sports. I know yesterday I said we'd be going over shortstops and continuing our baseball primer, but I wanted to switch it up a little bit and throw some football in there. So let's uh, get to it. Uh, the first piece of news that I wanted to address is Antonio Brown requesting a trade from the Steelers. Um, Assuming he's traded, I wanted to touch on a few things. Um, this is definitely going to affect Ben Roethlisberger. I am obviously going to move him down a few pegs in the rankings before the season. And it's also going to make me question his career moving forward. Last season, we were talking about retirement. And I know he kind of had a good season and they once again uh, won the division. But I got to think that without Le'Veon and now without Antonio, and this team, I will predict uh, early on, will finish third in the division behind the Browns and the Ravens, which we will get to. But um, I think that after that, Ben might be contemplating a retirement and the Steelers might be contemplating a rebuild in general. So um, that obviously would affect the Steelers. People I would move up, though, uh, Juju Smith-Schuster. He was probably a first-round or I should say a top 10 wide receiver before this. He might even be in that top five wide receiver conversation. He's just a beast. He's fast. He's tall. He's going to be the number one with Ben throwing to him So for at least one more year. So he might even be a top five wide receiver going forward this season. Um, I would throw James Washington up there uh, for a fantasy sleeper. He might rise up astronomically but you might even have to believe in that he was their second round pick and now they're number two assuming uh, Le uh antonio's traded so i would say rise him a bunch and this is also going to be vance mcdonald's year three in the steelers offense and he had a big breakout last year so i would expect even more of a breakout and he's going to be fed the brock a lot so i'd move him up in the tight end rankings of course, with the Steelers, there's a chance that they could keep Antonio Brown and he might sit out and he, uh, so just stay tuned. Now, you never know. You can d not definitively say that they will trade him. I would think that with the Le'Veon Bell trade, they would learn from that and recoup some assets for Brown before, uh, he, they lose him for nothing. And, um, I also wanted to say with the Le'Veon Bell effect in general, I think uh, this just hurt. This is just another black eye for uh, the Steelers' management and maybe free agents going forward. It might be harder to convince uh, some to play there as A.B. Le'Veon are forcing their way out, just not looking good. Anyway, moving on to the next big piece of news, my Cleveland Browns picking up Kareem Hunt. Obviously, everybody's really excited for that. I actually... Uh, predicted this after he was released by the Chiefs that the first thing that popped into my mind was that's a terrible thing obviously and if a team was going to give him another shot in his career the Browns would be perfect he obviously played collegiate ball in Ohio and the Browns are an up-and-coming team and they'd be they haven't really taken a risk on a player since Haslam and uh, his wife D have taken over so I think this is their perfect first uh, risk slash reconstruction project and he's going to be on his best behavior I believe going forward he has a lot to gain he's really young um, there's a lot of opportunity there so I think it's a perfect fit all around um, I do think that he's going to be suspended for at least eight games for the next season so that does obviously temper our fantasy hopes um, I do think that that is not necessarily a bad thing for when he comes back in fantasy because he'll be obviously fresh. Chubb will have, and Johnson will have taken the beating. And I think that that's also good for Chubb because he'll be more effective when uh, Kareem Hunt comes over and lightens that load. And those two might and probably will be the best one-two punch uh, running back combination in the NFL. I firmly believe that. So um, the only thing that... Uh, would leave me pause with the Browns and the Kareem Hunt situation obviously is they did just hire a new coach we don't know what Freddie Kitchens is gonna do in terms of being a positive impact or a negative impact on the team 
they did finish well last year with uh, Greg Williams, and I do love their roster going forward. It's really young. They have two third-round picks. They have a mid-first-round pick, and they have a ton of cap room. I actually do predict they will win the division next year. They just have so many weapons now for Baker, and I just think that they will take that leap. Uh, it's going to be a dogfight between them and the Ravens. Might even go to the last game of the season, but I do think they will uh, win that division. Um, so for fantasy, though, I will have to say that a lot of people might be picking him in a middle round, and I do think that would be a reach. Anything, obviously, more than a middle. If he's an early round pick, assuming he suspended at least eight games, I think that would be a really big reach. You do need the roster spots to some extent. I, though, I'm not going to say you shouldn't draft him. He, just the potential there is insane. So I would be willing to spend a late round pick. Uh, but I, I can't go any higher than that um, based on the fact that I do think. And I think that might be his at least. He might even be suspended 10 games. And, uh, of course, Ray Rice was suspended a whole year. So the NFL, if they wanted to make a point, that would obviously be contested, I think, in that case. But I do think 8 to 10 games is the big possibility there. Uh, moving on, I uh, do want to point out Joe Flacco was traded to the Broncos in a little minor trade. I do like it for both teams. I do think that with the Broncos having the number 10 pick, they're either going to stay there and select their quarterback, or since this is a historically weak draft for quarterbacks, they might move up to select, say, Haskins or somebody else in case... Haskins was picked, and then they think somebody else might get picked sooner than we thought. But in comparison to last year when Mayfield, Allen, uh, Darnold, all these guys, we had like four quarterbacks taken in the top five picks. It's just not going to be that way, and the Broncos will be able to pick who they want or have a better opportunity to select who they want, and then that person can learn from Flacco for a year or two maybe. Um he was kind of a, it was only a mid-round pick that they paid for him, and Flacco uh, wasn't bad last year, twice as many touchdowns as interceptions. He's going to be healthy, and he's going to be motivated. He was just ditched by the team he was with for his whole career. He won a Super Bowl with them. Um, so there is motive, and maybe another contract if he does well this season for Denver. So there is motivation on both sides, and obviously Baltimore was moving forward with Lamar, so they got something back for Flacco. I think it was just a good deal for both teams, and I uh, like it. Not necessarily for fantasy. I'm not picking Flacco. Um, I might select Lamar Jackson, but that didn't really affect the wasn't really affected by the trade. So, just wanted to point that out for some news. Finally, um, I wanted to mention Kyler Murray. Um, he did decide to move forward and play quarterback and focus all his attention on that. Um, Obviously, we know that football, he's going to get paid right away, and baseball, his career might not pan out. But um, I think that um, with his being projected as a first-round pick and him his ceiling in baseball being Mookie Betts, I really do think that it might have been better for him to do the Whedon route where try baseball first since that has a lot less toll on your body. And then if that not work out, since you're so young, transition then to football, since that will always be an option. But hey, he knows better than me. He's more passionate maybe about uh, football, but I do think it is a huge loss for pretty much every other party involved. Uh, Major League Baseball is going to have to probably change their rules now because the A's literally lost their first pick in the draft for nothing. So they got to protect teams a little bit better than that. Base The A's signed off on a good faith deal to let him play college football and no baseball team is going to be incentivized to ever do that again. So um, two sports stars, college sports in general, they're going to have less of a player pool from their best players to pick from. And it's just a really uh, bad situation. I feel it kind of stinks that it turned out this way. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. And I'm happy that Murray is going to do his thing that he wants to do going forward and that the rules will be cleared up so nobody will get screwed in the future. But it is really unfortunate for Oakland and uh, Major League Baseball because they lost out uh, what looks like now on a really high-end prospect. So that's going to be it for the players. 
I did want to mention just really quickly, um, they did release Super Bowl odds right after the Super Bowl and some questionable teams, the Chargers at three. I'm not really seeing why I would rank them the third highest probability team to win the Super Bowl uh, with their injury risks. Old Phillip Rivers, Kansas City in their division. Um, that seems a little strange to me. The Colts at five, I think they're predicting Le'Veon is going to sign there, and the Colts did make the playoffs, and they are looking better for next year, but I do think that is a reach, and uh, they do need a lot of help in other areas. And like I said, the Steelers at eight, just the dysfunction around their organization in general. They're not going to have AB and Le'Veon probably, so that seems way too... I wouldn't even predict them to win the, the division, so I would not bet money on them for the eighth spot to win the Super Bowl. Good bets. There's a lot of good bets. Dallas at 11. The Eagles at 12, if you think they're going to bounce back with Wentz. The Packers, if they get a coach and Aaron Rodgers has a huge bounce back, they're behind all the teams that I just mentioned. If you want to go really deep, the Panthers, I think they're not going to worry as much about Newton and beating him up. They're just going to try to win and maximize his career going forward. And they're the 19th ranked team. And uh, Jacksonville, they're the 20th ranked team. If they get a quarterback, we know with Fournette uh, healthy and in that defense, they could uh, definitely win a Super Bowl. And that's uh, really good odds for the 20th team. That's all I got today, guys. Uh, we'll be back tomorrow with uh, shortstops, continue baseball. But it's been a pleasure, and I'll see you then. Take it easy.